If you started riding bikes, uh, it's not uncommon to experience pain, but that's not something that you should be um, experiencing. It shouldn't be painful to ride a bike. Now, um, with that being said, um, if you are pushing your muscles and you haven't been, and then you started riding and your, your muscles hurt, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about actually having um, having pain. So we're going to go through a list and I will we'll break it down. The first most common reason for having a having pain while riding your bike is not doing your stretches correctly. You should before you before you get on your bike, you should have at least, you know, probably 15 minutes of stretching where you're really giving your giving your limbs the you know, getting them out there cuz if you just get get up and get on your bike, that's not not great. Um, it's you're going to get sprains strains muscle muscle strains, sorry. And um you know, it's, it's just not going to be very pleasant. Um, it's not going to be as fun. The second reason um, you can be experiencing pain on your bike, cramping and that kind of stuff, um, is a poor diet. Sometimes people won't eat anything and then they'll get on their bike. Here's the thing. You really need to make sure you're getting getting the right things to eat. Maybe before you go on a ride, have a bowl of you know oatmeal or something, you know. Um, something where you have energy, you know. Uh, you don't get on your bike with an empty stomach. Um, make sure that you're taking vitamins. And make sure that you're drinking enough water. Make sure that maybe uh, drink drink uh, different kinds of water, um, some kind of replenisher. Um, just by way of example, there's these ones here. I just picked them up at the local store. They're called uh, Noon Hydration, and they have different electrolytes in them and stuff. You just put them in one of your bottles of water, um, and that way I have one one water bottle that's like just water. The other one has this in it. Uh, sometimes I switch back and forth. Um, you need to plan at drinking, drink, and drink, and take a drink of your bottle every like five to ten minutes, uh, maybe even more, maybe more frequently if it's hot, and, and uh, plan for um, finishing off one of the bottles for like 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and here's another example of what you can use. This one is called. Um, I guess it's called Drip Drop ORS, uh, Dehydration Relief Fast, um, gives you electrolytes and that kind of stuff, fast relief from dehydration caused by exercise, heat, illness, travel, sleep, hangover. So um, th those are just some good examples of you know what you can use to, to stay hydrated. Um, pickle juice. You can drink pickle juice. Um, obviously, you know that that can be a thing that you do. But if you're staying, if you're getting a good diet, you really don't won't need it as much. Uh, you just have to watch your intake on different things. Um, for every 45 minutes that you are riding, you should be eating about like. 60 or 90 calories or something like that you know you find out your sweet zone and when you get back from a ride that was maybe um, over over 40 minutes you should have some kind of a snack or, or a meal or something like that um, th these are things that, 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 that having a poor diet not not getting it getting the right things to eat and drink you're gonna have pain um, and that's that's not good. <laughs> we shouldn't have that. Um, the next thing, so not stretching, having a poor diet. The next thing, if your bike is too big for you or too small for you, this can cause a lot of soreness. Um, it can actually cause knee problems. I was reading in an article um, the other day um, where if if your if your bike isn't you know you're trying to make something where they're just not working, it, it can actually cause problems with with a lot of different things: um, back pain, hand pain, all kinds of different stuff. Um, let's see what else. Uh, number four, I think is what, which one this is. Um, if your seat is at the wrong height, you should, when you're pedaling on your bike, your legs should not be able to fully extend. Okay, so just your pedal is supposed to go on this part of your shoe, not this part. Okay, so if your if your foot is on the right part uh, of your shoe. Um, your leg should not be fully extending, extending down. If your leg is fully extending, that's going to actually cause a lot of problems. But with that being said, if your seat's too low and you're going like this, that's going to cause a lot of problems too. So make sure that your height, that your seat is done where you can go about like this. I, I your your leg doesn't need to go 
See what I mean? Not like this, and not like this. It needs to be real nice, comfortable. And one way to check this is just go out for a ride. Does it does it hurt? You know, does it feel like your legs are cramping up? Does it feel like your legs are getting this stretch? Um, they say that when your foot is on the pedal, if you look if you look at it, your knee is supposed to be in a line with where your foot is touching the pedal when it is at the three o'clock position. So when it's it's with your pe with, with the pedal as far forward as it'll go before it starts going before you start pushing down on it to get the next rotation, that should be in a line. Um, another way to check is if you are sitting on your bike. Now you're going to have to have somebody hold it for you. Um, your leg should be able to fully extend when you put your heel on the pedal and push it all the way to what's that like five o'clock or whatever, um, somewhere in there, and that that should be fully extended. So that that's just a way of, of getting it roughly where it's supposed to be. You can also go in for an, for a professional bike fit, which is very helpful. Um, how do you know if your bike is too large or too small? When you're standing over your bike, there should be like I don't know, like that much clearance between the bar and like your area. That's going to be a little bit different for people because some people kind of hang more than others. Um, but if you've got biking shorts on, you know, they'll, they'll kind of hold things up if you, if you know what I mean. And that'll kind of give you an idea. You, you should be able to stand over the bike, okay, with one leg on, e one leg on each side of the bike and the bar in between in your groin area without it you know really and without it being like super high above so probably about two fingers uh, between um, your groin and, and the bar um, and once again a professional bike fit will help you with this but you should know roughly what size you are I am five foot ten and I ride a 56 centimeter Trek. Every different bike company has their own little individual sizes, so a large Trek might not be a large, you know, special specialized. Um, yeah, that's one of the bad things. And also, your height doesn't necessarily guarantee that you'll be in that bike because your leg sizes are going to be different, your torso sizes are going to be different. It's really one of those things where you have to get get used to the bike. Now some people say, well, okay, I don't get on the bike that way. I get a small one that I can touch the ground. Yeah, that's actually probably why you're having leg problems, um, pain, you know, and actually knee problems sometimes too. You need to be able to stand over the bike and then to step into the bike to go. Now that's for another lesson, but or for another discussion, but main idea here, okay, stretch, have, good, have a good diet, uh, make sure that the bike fits you, um, put the seat at the right height. Now that takes us to the next thing, number five. Okay, if your seat is too far forward or too far back, where the bike seat hits this pole here, it can go further back on the pole or for, for, further forward on the pole. If you have it where it's too far forward on the pole, it's going to have you too far towards the bars. And it's going to get very uncomfortable. Okay, but if you have it too far back, eh, you're going to feel that in your back and in your wrists. Really, really strong. You're going to feel it there. Um, so you're going to want to find that find that spot once again. If you angle it and see where your knee, where, where the line, if the line is there between your knee and that part of the foot, um, where the ridge is right before the arch. Um, is on the pedal. If that's a straight line, that will tell you if your if your um, seat needs to go forward or backwards. If it's if here's your knee and here's your foot. And if it's like this, you're too far forward. If it's like this, you're too far back. If it's in a straight line, that's where it should be. Um, now, once again, this is rough idea for getting you in the ballpark of where your bike should be fitting you. Um, I, I'm I'm not a professional, so. If you're having problems fitting your bike, or if you're not sure if it's the right size, talk to a professional before you go wasting your money on something that you're not even going to enjoy. Um, um, another thing that can cause a lot of a lot of pain 
if you have weak upper body strength, this is, I'm not talking about lifting dumbbells, I'm talking about your, your stomach area. Um, if those muscles are not exercised and you can't hold yourself up on the bike, that's going to cause a problem. A lot of people think that biking is just with just leg muscles. That's that's not true. You're also exercising your upper body strength, so so your your stomach area. Okay, you you shouldn't be putting all your weight down on your handlebars with your arms, and you definitely shouldn't be locking your arms. Your arms should be loose. Your hands shouldn't be gripped onto the handlebars too tightly. Okay, so this should loosen up, and your and your stomach muscles in in here. Your muscles in here should be kind of compensating with that, where you're holding yourself like I am right now. Where you're leaning forward, yeah, but your your, your muscles are engaged. If your leg muscles are the only muscles doing anything on your bike, you're, you're doing it wrong. Um, and if, if you're trying to compensate by not having those muscles and just putting all your weight on your on your arms, that's going to be very uncomfortable. First off, every time that you hit a bump, it's going to jar you real bad. Um, going on bumpy roads already kind of messes, messes you up. It already kind of makes things sensitive. Uh, so if you're locking, it's just going to make things worse. And, you know, so when you're riding your bike, you should have relaxed like this, okay? So um, if you've got an exercise upper body, uh, body strength and compensating by locking your arms, it's going to put a lot of strain there, and it's just not going not gonna to be fun. Uh, you're going to have a lot of pain in your wrists, for instance. Um, another thing is if you're not shifting your gears correctly, um, if you're going into too high of a gear where your legs are going real fast, that's that, that's going to wear out your muscles. It's going to wear. It's going to not only that, but it's, it can also hurt your knees, and it uses up all your strength. You should be going somewhere around here. Okay, maybe for like going downhill. Okay, now for going uphill, you should be somewhere around. Or going on a flat, you should be going somewhere around here. I think they figure somewhere around 80 reps rotations okay so one two three right per minute um and you can kind of get a feel for it when somebody's going uphill you oftentimes see them going pedaling real slow and pushing real hard that's just using up all your strength and it tears up your muscles and it's just not fun and it i mean there's so many different reasons why you don't do that another thing you see is people instantly standing up on the, standing up out of the seat every single time they go up the slightest incline you, you don't really need to do that um, you just need to work on your shifting, and it makes things a lot more comfortable. You know, you shouldn't be going pushing this hard for every every rotation, but you shouldn't be going like this. You, you know, there there has to be a, a somewhere in the middle that you can go, and um, so you know, get you get used to the idea of, of switching your gears. Um, that's just something that you, you have to learn. That it's a real basic skill. Another thing about pedaling is the more you pedal you're going to kind of lose steam, for, uh, for lack of a better word. So you're, you're going to eventually keep going slower and slower and slower. And so that takes us to the last point that causes pain that will actually help that as well. When you are riding, every five to ten minutes or so, stand up out of the seat and pedal for about ten to twenty seconds, and then sit back down. What this does is your, your speed is slowly going to go down, well, it's going to get you up faster. It's easier when you're standing, so than that. But here's the thing: when you're standing, it'll use it more energy. So it's kind of you can't do it the whole time. Um, but with that being said, when you stand up out of your seat, that gets rid of another area of pain. That's butt pain. Um, also, it helps with arms and legs. You just start getting kind of tense when you've been on a bike, bike especially for too long. And when you stand up, it kind of just helps that to work itself out. Um, and if you don't know how to do that, the, that's something you need to learn. Not here, but something you need to learn. Um, so try switching these these different things and see see if it stops the pain that you're having. Um, these are typically the, the the biggest problems that people have that cause pain. So just as a, just to review, number one was not stretching uh, before and after. Um, number two, having a poor diet, not giving your body what it needs in order to sustain, so it has cramps and those kinds of things. Um, number three, having a bike that is the wrong size for you. Number four, having your seat too high or too low. Number five, um, having your seat too far forward or too far back. Number six, um, not using your upper, bo upper body strength, so it pushes too much weight onto your arms. Number seven, not shifting your gears correctly. And number eight, 
not getting out of your seat every 10 minutes or so. Um, so hope that this helps and uh, have a lot of fun riding your bike. And uh, if you're experiencing um, excessive pain while riding, something's off somewhere.